Good morning YouTube. Uh, just uh, making plans here for a uh, solar tracking device. I've been actually building one and I found online that you can actually buy them cheaper than you can get the parts to build them. So I ended up ordering one of these solar tracking devices, single axle solar tracker from um, from China and I plan on doing a review on that because uh, you never know what you get until it shows up so uh, anyway in the meantime I am trying to build myself a uh, a uh, mounting system to accommodate this tracking system and what I want it to do the unique features I need it to have is because it's a single axis I need it to be able to pivot from winter to summer and I'll just mechanically do that with with an arm so this whole support system has to be able to pivot about I'd say 20 degrees or so and uh, the other catch 22 is I only have two solar panels right now and I know that they are like a sheet of plywood basically so I don't know if I'm going to be able to put more than two up on a solar tracking unit but what I'm doing is I'm building this this tracker unit to hold two solar panels but in the event that I wanted to extend it and put four on it wouldn't be a situation where I'd have to take it down and bring it in the shop I can just extend it simply because on this main frame here that supports the panels this is the main pivot support and then this is kind of the square frame I guess you could call it I'm going to leave stubs out that it's just built with three quarter inch 065 square tubing and one inch 065 wall slides right over top of it so what I'll do is just put some jam nuts weld some nuts on and I, I can extend these two feet on the bottom and two feet on the top and I'd be able to slide the panel from the center position halfway down and then put the exact same array above that and I would be able to accommodate four panels without a major major um, transformation of the machine so that's kind of what I'm trying to do here I've uh, got the materials I'm gonna bring them in start cutting and maybe I'll uh, give a few updates as I go along here uh, it's fairly straightforward though just you know a bunch of cutting and welding and uh, then when my uh, solar tracker gets here from China um, I will uh, get that installed and see what kind of uh, good luck that thing will bring me and maybe give you a heads up I haven't been able to find anything on these trackers so I thought maybe I'd I'd take the chance and buy one and see what happens they're only a hundred dollars um, with shipping and uh, it's it's quite difficult to build a solar tracker yourself that is uh, even remotely close to a hundred dollars like at this scale anyway you can build the little guys for nothing but when you get into the bigger stuff obviously you need uh, heavier duty or relays and switches and uh, double pull double throat sort of things to reverse motors and linear actuators and you name it so that hundred dollar kit does not come with a linear actuator I actually have one and uh, I do have one off an old satellite dish that I just might try and revive I don't know what kind of strength it has but I imagine it's not too bad for for pounds anyway anyway that's it for now and I will uh, keep you posted. I just thought I'd give us a quick shot here where I'm at just getting ready to uh, tack weld the main pivoting support and this will be the main carrier of the whole outfit and it pivots here uh, just off center so that the bottom of the panels are actually the heavy end of the unit just slightly in case you lost control you wouldn't uh, have an overextension of any wires or the actuator or bonk yourself in the head sort of deal so I kind of offset it one direction but not very far so that's where we're at now here um, just ready to tack her up here and it'll uh, it'll probably make more sense here with later clips okay we've got our uh, our mainframe all welded up here nice uh, now we're uh, we're setting our our uh, pillow block bearings in position and we're just using this piece of one inch cold rolled uh, for alignment uh, we I'm not going to use the full joint actually I'm just going to use spurs and it will allow the option that if needed I could put a third bearing in the center for more support but really what I'm going to do 
is this will only be about a six inch piece of one inch cold rolled and it'll just drop in the top like a pocket like one of them cheap homemade hinges and then the same down here it'll just drop into the pocket you do up the lock collar and uh, the frame that supports the panels will actually hold everything together so with any luck two bearings will be enough if not I may have to put a third bearing in in the midway somewhere and just put another six inch spur on it for support I just don't know what to expect for wind and uh, what kind of influence the wind will have on these uh, the two panels I'm not too worried about it's if I ever went to four panels that I'd be more concerned with so anyway just thought I'd show you how I'm lining everything up making sure everything's nice and true and the whole the whole frame that holds the uh, that holds the uh, panels will pivot on this shaft and we're gonna shoot for about a I'm hoping about a 90 degree pivot but uh, we'll take what we can get uh, it's not uh, the late late sun and the early sun where I'm putting this the early sun I'm not gonna be able to grab onto the early sun until about 8 in the morning or maybe 9 because of some trees I can't find a more suitable place to put this unless it went on a rooftop and then if you put it on a rooftop then you're really worried about wind because you have those updrafts created by the slope of the roof so anyway just thought I'd poke in here and let you know where I'm at now and I'll keep you posted okay so we've got our uh, our main frame laid out here and partially tack welded into place here uh, this will be the main pivoting structure that holds the uh, the, the the array of two panels um, right now I'm just it's all squared up and tack welded here I'm just gonna do a bit more cutting and uh, a bit more tacking and then once everything's good and square we'll uh, we'll weld her up here we'll make sure she fits onto uh, onto the main frame there and you see what I mean now with just the stubs that drop into the bearings instead of wasting all that cold rolled that cold rolled isn't that cheap so uh, I had a, a spare piece laying around here so I just cut one and I cut the the top one longer than the bottom one by one inch and the reason I did that is if you've ever tried to line up two shafts at the same time I'm pretty sure you can relate that it's never a, a fun challenge especially when you're by yourself so what I do is I start the top one first and the the bottom one of course will be down at ground level so I'm not dangling on a ladder trying to get that both of them lined up at the same time and because uh, I think in the end it'll be too heavy to, to hang the whole structure all as one so we'll put her up in pieces and uh, this one here being four inches so once the top one's an inch started this one here is still capable of uh, finding its hole and going in okay oh, all right here we are again uh, got our main frame uh, welded on one side this will support the array of two and uh, as you can see here it's starting to come together here um, so our main frame here that our panels pivot on is uh, is mounted now and you can see I've got a fairly wide range of motion so far but I haven't hooked up my linear uh, actuator yet so we're gonna have to be careful that when we do that we have uh, room for adjustment and uh, but my main thing was getting it away from these bearings so that it had the clearance so that's where uh, where these stub shafts come in here so uh, hopefully it's kind of making sense here now on what I'm doing so in the center here where this bolt is will be the main mount and it will pivot on that mount to adjust it to winter sun and summer sun because we get a fairly a fairly uh, wide range I don't even know what the degrees are I'm gonna have to uh, do some googling on that but I'm just gonna make sure that I have a, a wide range um, I'm kind of experienced on where the the sun is in both cases but until I get it out there mounted it's uh, it's a tough call to make so uh, I'm just going to uh, make sure that I have lots of lots of adjustment. So that's uh, that's it so far. Here we'll uh, we'll keep you posted as I keep lugging just away. Just wanted to mention here uh, something I did forget to mention, and I actually forgot to do here. I just flipped the darn thing over, and I then I realized 
I left these uh, sticking out here three inches. Uh, this is the actual top and there's there's two nubs sticking out there and then two on the bottom. And like I'd mentioned before, I'd like to leave this so I could potentially extend it another, uh, it would be about a foot and a half up and a foot and a half down. So what I what I was thinking I could do, so I didn't have to take the whole thing down and bring it back in and start welding or try and find a way to get a welder out there, is this one inch 065 wall slides right over this three quarter inch 065 wall. So what I would do is just weld a nut, drill a hole in it, weld a nut, and then I would just do a jam stop on it. Like just dead head a bolt right against it and I could extend the actual main frame for the solar panels without actually needing a welder. So that's kind of my thought here. Now I do intend on putting a, a three inch stub here as well, but like I said I actually forgot about that. So I'm going to have to flip back over here and get some three inch stubs put on there to match up those and uh, just thought I'd mention that. Linear actuators on now. I'm just giving it a full cycle here to see where how things look. It's got about a 90 degree sweep on it and I found uh, trying to uh, get any more than that may uh, jeopardize the uh, the lifespan of the linear actuator. Just powering it here with actually a 9 volt battery of all things Duracell. <laughs> and it's got auto shut off there when it reaches the end of its stroke so I'm getting about uh, like I say it's about 45 there and about 45 the other way so I think I'm gonna be happy with that um, obviously this part here is stationary and uh, this framework is actually what's gonna be turning so I just have to get my uh, my main support post on and then once I do that I'll build my uh, pitch control and that'll just be manual um, so I could go out and set it once or twice or three times a year I just manually adjust it to the sun sun being lower in the sky or obviously higher so I was just uh, getting ready here to put my support in here and I just happened to uh, give it a rigidity test and it failed miserably you see this thing flexing here so I'm gonna have to uh, add a few more of these guys in here. I didn't want to get them in there until I knew exactly where this position, where this shaft will come out or this mounting arm. Um, but I definitely am going to have to rigid this up. This is only one eighth uh, two inch angle and uh, of course weight's an issue. I don't want to hang a whole bunch of weight up high. However, that's just not going to cut or the wind's going to tear that apart eventually. So I'll get some more support in here once I figure out where this here part is going to travel, where this arm is going to travel.